This is a quick video for your Michaelis Mitten Kinetics. What we're going to do, we're going to go through every step in deriving the Michaelis Mitten Kinetics. So we're going to start off by having this little green guy represent a substrate. Some substrate. So when you have a substrate and an enzyme, so this little guy right here is going to represent an enzyme, they will go to a substrate enzyme complex. So we're going to have SE represents the substrate enzyme complex. So the rate at which this occurs is dependent upon the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the enzyme and something we call the kinetic constant. And we're going to say that's K1. K1. So when we have the substrate enzyme complex, it will then go to the product. And we're going to say this is K3 because when you also have the substrate enzyme complex, it can fall back apart back apart to just the substrate and the enzyme. Just because it's in the substrate enzyme complex doesn't mean you'll get a product. It can always go backwards. So we're going to say that this is K2. So we have K1, K2, and K3. So on this part, we're going to assume that this is irreversible. Irreversible. Sible. Meaning that once you have the product, it won't go back to the substrate enzyme complex. And some some reactions that does happen, but right now we're just going to assume it's irreversible because it simplifies the math a lot. So when you have the substrate enzyme complex go to the product, you also get another free enzyme. So now we have a free enzyme, so we have E. So this is the same enzyme as this one. So E right here, these two things, represent the same number. So they have the same concentration because all it is is just going back so that another substrate can come in here and then we can go back to the substrate enzyme complex. So let's just think about this for just one second. Let's say, let's say we have our substrate. We want to measure how fast it goes to the product. So we're going to measure that by saying this V, where V is the speed of the reaction. So what we notice with, with uh, Michaelis Mitten Kinetics is when you have the speed of the reaction, V, versus the concentration of the substrate, there's a straight line for a little bit. But then it starts to curve like this and it flattens out. And they call this Vmax. So right here is Vmax. The reason this Vmax exists is because there's a limited number of enzymes. So let's say we have 50 enzymes for this line. 50 enzymes. So E naught the initial concentration of the enzymes is equal to 50. So if we have 10 substrates, I mean, they're just going to be able to find an empty enzyme relatively quickly. But if we have uh, 30, yeah, they're still able to find a substrate pretty easily. But maybe around 50, they're not going to be able to find an empty enzyme uh, completely because you need them to find an empty enzyme so that they become the substrate enzyme complex, so then they can go to the product. So if we have, say, a hundred enzymes, or I'm sorry, a hundred substrates, they are not able to find the enzyme anymore, and therefore they max out. They have this maximum uh, production of P, and we call that Vmax. Now Vmax is dependent upon the, the concentration of the enzyme, the initial concentration of the enzyme. So we can also have an let's say we have a hundred enzymes. Well we're gonna have a different Vmax because it's not gonna change until it gets up to where all the enzymes are consumed. So we have this at a hundred the enzyme at a hundred enzymes. So it's gonna need a little bit more substrate for it to max out. So this is Vmax. So what we see with this is Vmax changes with the amount of enzymes. But we can write a generic Vmax. We can just say Vmax is equal to K3 times the initial concentration of enzymes. So what we're doing by that is we're assuming that all the enzymes are in the enzyme substrate complex. Because it, let's say if we have let's say we have 10,000 substrates. Well, if there are 10,000 substrates and only 100 enzymes, well, these enzymes once they once they generate a product. I mean, a substrate's going to find them right away and go right back in there. So they're always going to be in the substrate enzyme complex, almost always, because once they make the product, once the 
the substrate converts or falls back out, something else is going to go right back into it. So Vmax is equal to K3 is equal to K3 times the initial concentration of the of the enzymes. So Vmax. And that's just the ge generic definition of Vmax. So now that we have an equation for Vmax, we know what Vmax is. We have an equation for it. Well, let's find an equation that will actually represent this entire line. So we have some, we have our line right here. Let's find an equation that actually represents it. So we know that the production rate of P is equal to K3 times the substrate enzyme complex. This is the only way, this reaction is the only way we get product. So it's based off the, the substrate enzyme complex times K3, and that's just the reaction rate or the reaction equation for the, the generation of product. So let's look at how this is generated. How is the substrate enzyme complex generated and consumed? Well, see, so the change in the substrate enzyme complex with respect to time is equal to K1 times the substrate uh, concentration times the enzyme, the free enzyme concentration, minus, because it's being generated this way, but it's being consumed back this way, so minus K2 times the substrate enzyme complex, minus, well, it's being, it's being consumed again right here, K3. So that is K3 times the substrate enzyme complex. So if we say we have steady state, steady state, then that means this is approximately zero. That means the change in the concentration of the substrate enzyme complex with respect to time is approximately zero. Now this doesn't mean we have a constant concentration of substrate, but for the most part we do. That's, that's kind of what we're saying. So that's a little confusing, but for the most part we're saying that these rates are all about constant. That this, that if this one speeds up, if this one goes faster, then this one will also go faster because then we have more substrate enzyme complex. So if this one goes up, then this one will go up, and this one will go up. So the, the concentration of the substrate enzyme complex will stay practically the same. Or if this one slows down, this reaction will slow down, and this one will slow down because we have less substrate being generated, substrate enzyme being generated. So what we're seeing is we have some substrate enzyme complex, but the change of the substrate enzyme complex concentration with respect to time is approximately zero. It's not really changing that much. So then if we have that equal to zero, then what we can do is say K1 times the substrate enzyme is equal to K2 times the substrate enzyme complex plus K3 times the substrate enzyme complex. So all we did was move these two things over to this side of the equation. So we just added these both to the side, both to both sides of the equation. So now that we have that, we can say, we can just actually move this out. So we have the substrate enzyme complex times K2 plus K3 must equal K1 times the substrate concentration times the enzyme concentration. So then if we divide both sides of the equation by K2 plus K3 K2 plus K3, we get the, the concentration of the substrate enzyme complex is equal to K1 times the substrate enzymes concentrations, all divided by K2 plus K3. Now let's define a new term, Km. We're going to say Km is equal to K2 plus K3 all divided by K1. So if we have this, we can then say the substrate enzyme complex, enzyme complex is equal to S, the substrate, times the enzyme concentration, all divided by Km. So now that's actually where Km is. That's what Km is equal to. But now we're not really done yet. Even though you may think we have the substrate enzyme complex defined, 
we actually don't necessarily actually know it because we don't actually know the concentration of the free enzyme. However, we do know that the free enzyme is equal to the initial amount of enzyme we have minus the enzyme in the substrate enzyme complex. So substrate enzyme complex. So what I mean by that is, is if we just put a ton of enzyme in there, initially they'll all be free. But then they'll go to the substrate enzyme complex. So there'll be a ratio or some mixture between them. And that is what I mean by this equation, is that the free enzyme is equal to the initial amount of enzyme and the substrate enzyme complex. So the enzyme is only in two locations. either It's either free or it's in the substrate enzyme complex. So we can then plug this in to right there. So if we plug that in there, we get the substrate enzyme complex concentration is equal to the concentration of the substrate times, so we got to do a big bracket, the initial concentration of the enzymes minus the concentration of the substrate enzyme complex, big bracket, all divided by Km. So now we have to solve for, we have to get this SE over to this side of the equation. So let's do that, let's do that right now. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to break this up. So now we're going to have the substrate times the initial concentration of the enzyme, all divided by Km, minus the substrate concentration times the substrate enzyme concentration, all divided by Km. And now, since we have that, we can actually move this one over, move this over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this to both sides of the equation. So now we get the substrate enzyme complex plus the substrate times the substrate enzyme, all divided by Km, is equal to the substrate times E0 all over Km. So now that we have SE over here, let's just take SE out of both sides of, out of these two parts. So now we have SE times 1 plus the substrate all divided by Km. And that is equal to the substrate times E0 all over Km. Km. So now if we divide both sides by if we divide both sides by 1 plus SE over Km, so this is now 1 plus S over Km. This is now divided by 1 plus S over Km. What we get is the concentration of the substrate. I think I'm running. So the concentration of the substrate enzyme complex, SE, is now equal to the substrate concentration times E sub times E naught. E naught all divided by Km times 1 plus S over Km. So all we did is really this, we can actually erase this and rewrite it as look, looking more like this. It is now 1 over 1 plus S over Km. So then all we have to do is multiply Km out and we get the substrate enzyme complex concentration is equal to the substrate concentration times E0 all over Km plus the substrate enzyme, or just the substrate concentration. So now we finally have, because we can measure the substrate concentration, we can measure the, the initial uh, concentration of the enzymes. I mean, we know how many enzymes we're putting into the system. So we now know everything in this. So we now know the concentration of the substrate enzyme complex. Now, if we remember, if we remember, our reaction requires just SE. So this, what we're going to do is, is we're going to plug, whoops, we're going to plug this thing right here we're going to take it all the way up here and plug it into, oh, that's really far up there. Plug it into right there. So then what we get is K3 times the substrate uh, concentration times the 
initial concentration of the enzyme, all divided by Km plus the substrate concentration. Now, if we remember what we defined Vmax as, this, this is Vmax, K3 times E0. And we have K3 and E0. So what do we get? We get this is now equal to, V is now equal to Vmax times the substrate concentration uh, all divided by Km plus the substrate concentration. So let's go back and actually look at our graph. So if we have very little substrate, very little substrate, then that means we practically have no substrate. So this S, if there's almost very, very little of it, and Km is bigger than S, well then it's going to be a straight line. So really it's just going to be, if there's very little, so if we have the very, let's do this in a different color just so it looks a little bit better. So we have very little substrate. So the concentration of the substrate is very small. Then that means we just have Vmax over Km times the substrate. So because if that's a small number, if that's a really small number in comparison to Km, this is just going to be, I mean, that's going to be small. It's just going to disappear. So then we just get this line. And that's what we see here. We see this line when the substrate concentration is very low. However, if we have a lot, a lot of substrate, so, so what I mean by that is, is the substrate concentration is much greater. So it's much, much greater than Km. Well, then we have Vmax. Vmax times the substrate, and if S is much, much greater than Km, then that's just going to be divided by the substrate concentration, and that's just equal to Vmax. And that's what we see here, is that it levels off. It levels off right here at Vmax. So, and in, in between, so right here when the concentration of the substrate, so the concentration of the substrate is approximately equal to Km, we get this curvature, we get this curving line. So I guess that's messy, but I guess that's what I, I wanted to show you is this that this equation right here, V, I just erase that, V is equal to V max times the substrate concentration all divided by Km plus the substrate and times the substrate concentration. And again, we see the straight line when we get that straight line when we see that the substrate is much smaller than Km, so it's practically zero. It's a straight line. But when the substrate is much, much greater than Km, we get this flat line. We get Vmax. So that is the derivation of Michaelis mitten kinetics for irreversible, a guy we pointed out, when we have an irreversible substrate going to product. So that has to be irreversible.